not even eight o'clock yet. I'm I'm reminding myself of this cake song. Um, short skirt, long jacket. I need a girl who gets up early. Gets up early. I need a girl who stays up late. Stays up late. I went to bed after one. I woke up before eight. Why am I up? Why am I up? I don't know. Okay, hey, so today is April 12th, yes, I think. Anyway, it's Saturday morning. I woke up too early. This episode's, this episode's going to be disjointed, but then they usually are anyway. So I will try to raise my voice. I'm a little bit low. I know. Probably can't hear me. So what do we have in this episode? In this episode, we have no finishes. We do have some progress, and... I have a little bit of footage of the eclipse. Um, let me put this down. And uh, some kitty baby news. So, let's get started. Do you want to see the kitties first? I'll show you the kitties first. So, these are some pictures that I have of the foster cat while she was pregnant. And, um, heard through the grapevine through our neighborhood Facebook page that someone had named her Jasmine. I don't know. We have since decided that the shelter will, I'm sure the shelter will take her, but the chances of her getting adopted quickly are pretty low. So we decided to keep the mom. Um, so her name is Dottie because she's got a little freckle, a little light brown freckle on her nose. I don't care for the name, but since I've named like half the cats, it's not really my turn to name the cats, so. <laughs> um, so these are the babies, and uh, they are a week old today, actually. They were born, the first one was born, 10.20, I think, in the morning. It was Calico, so usually Calicos are girls. Followed by, I don't remember the order of everybody. Um, I believe the second one was a torty, so that's usually a girl too. After that, I don't know. I think the last one was black. I think. <laughs> it's the same way with, with uh, the last big litter that we had too. Um, I remember the first two. I remember the last one. Everything else is a blur in between. Isn't that weird? Anyway, uh, so those are the babies, and um, everybody's doing well, everybody's healthy, everybody's being fed, thank the Lord, because we had a scare, this was the first, second day, we had a scare, we weren't sure, one of them was being fed, opened up a can of formula, and no, he was being fed, so we've just been kind of making sure they, they take turns on the teats, because um, that's a big thing, because... You know, especially as they get bigger, she can only go like this so much to expose teeth, and they're, you know they're fighting for for nipples and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, everybody's fine. So their eyes are still closed. They should be opening up in the next few days. Um, what else? I mean, that's it. Um, I'm waiting until they're they're properly weaned to take them to the shelter so that's the cat news we're not keeping them all because that would be 20 cats and y'all i ain't about that life my cat sanctuary but i ain't that kind of cat sanctuary <laughs> okay so um let me start off with the squares it's kind of like a repeat of last year it's like hey look at my squares well hey look at my squares so i've made five since the last episode and they're mostly blues so we got this is the big chunks these are like the out this this style with you know just the two colors and the way it is are the outside part of this blanket so I have two of those yeah 
So I'm trying to finish up all the blues and grays. I ran out of this one color. This is a close enough match that it's fine. So the only thing I don't want, I did have one square, actually right here, where I was doing a multicolor thing. And I was like, you know what? That's not really gonna go with the theme of the blanket. So I left that out. Oops. So, where'd it go now? That wasn't really happening here. It's just a little bit of a shade difference. I'm like, eh, that's fine. So, have those two, and then I have some white and gray. Oh, I think I showed this one before. Okay, so I made four, not five. Blue and gray, blue, gray, purple. So next up on my radar with these squares, my bowl over here, I have, um, if you've watched my yarn organization, not from last year, but the year before, I showed this big tote that was full of scraps. Actually, I think I might have showed it in the last one too. I don't remember. Anyway, so that's what this is from. So I've got some white, I have some teal, some raw blue, some periwinkle blue, gray, light blue, um, yeah. So that's what's going on now. Um, not trying to color coordinate this blanket. Oh, here's some more gray. I'm not trying to color coordinate this blanket, but I guess by accident, it's kind of color coordinating itself. So I don't want to throw in some color that's gonna end up being like a pop of color because I don't think it's really gonna flow very well. Like I've got a lot of orange in there. I don't think it's gonna go. So I'm not using it. And I have like yellows, I'm not gonna use that. So really this palette is turning into the purples and the blues and the whites, um, a little bit of that brown, some of that black, that's it. And really I think the brown might be throwing it off too. Honestly what I'll do is um, I'm going to make some more squares, lay it out, kind of see where it's looking, and if I don't like the brown, I'm just going to take it out. I'll do something with those extra squares. I'll figure it out. So. Yeah, that's it for that. I am knitting these on a US 8, five millimeter. And um, it's a free pattern. It's an easy, I don't even have my computer up yet. Easy corner to corner square blanket. Hold on. Man, it took forever to find that. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, I wanted to get the, the designer's name. So it's easy C to C, which means corner to corner squares by Rosina Plain, and there's um, it's a free pattern, and there's also a crochet version in that pattern. I'm doing the knit version. And for some reason, I didn't make a project page for it, so I'm gonna do that. Um, where was I going with that? I don't know. I told you disjointed, okay. Oh, I was gonna tell you the stitch count. That's what it was. So the original stitch count has it going. 21 stitches from here to here, and it's on DK weight, so I just went up to worsted weight, so it'd be bigger, plus I added 10 stitches, so, no, 41. So the original is 31, and I'm doing 41. That's what it is. That's what I wanted to tell you. That took forever, because I don't do show notes. Well, I do, they're down below, but it's just whatever's on top of my head, which is probably not the best thing. Let's just be honest. But that's how we roll here. Okay, so I gotta find a place to put my tea. I'm having green tea today. It's not gonna wake me up, so I don't know why I started with that, but I just felt like having some green tea. So I am on, I don't know why I didn't finish this off, because I have like this little chunk. I, I was knitting this on a 40 inch circular and I moved to a 60 inch, and I'll tell you why in a second. But I did add a few, inches since last time, probably two inches. So it pretty much looks the same. Um, I'm pretty much done with the decreasing portion of um, of this garment in the front and the back. Now I'm just knitting straight. I mean, it's still in pattern, but I'm just knitting straight for uh, another four or five inches, and then I'm going to go back out. So basically the, the Shibi does this, 
This is the Shibi by Carol Seller, by the way, sorry. So the, the garment kind of does this, so it's hourglassing your body. Um, you don't have to do the increases and decreases, um, but this is a fitted pullover, so it kind of works to do it that way. You don't have to, but I do. So that's where I'm at. This colorway is Rum Raisin on Polar Decay. It's one of my own colorways. Don't remember if I have this in the shop. Um, shop is going through some, some transitioning right now. So uh, it's gonna be a little bit bare bones in, in my shop right now until I figure some stuff out. So uh, nothing bad, it's just stuff. So that's what's going on with this. Um, I'm knitting this on a US 5. And did I say it was DK weight? Yeah, I think so. I love this pattern. It, it's hard to start. Yeah, I complained about it at the beginning and I complained about it in the same spot in the beginning. But once you get going, it's fine. Like, it's perfectly fine. And I love it. So, it makes me happy. Um, but then again, I'm a product knitter, so. <laughs> I don't really care for the process. The process, um, because there's these breaks going on, you know, there's some stock in out here and you've got like the patterning going diagonal and stuff. It, it does keep some interest. If you hate, like absolutely loathe ribbing, it breaks it up enough that it's okay. Like you could actually do this for a good bit and not go stir crazy. So that's nice. Um, yeah, that's all I really have to say about that. Uh, as I did say, I wasn't planning on doing a, a podcast this week, but I figured what the hell. So really I would have been further along, but you know, it is what it is. So yeah, that's it for that. Um, I am knitting size 41 and a half. Let me check. I think it's 41 and a half. Yes, 41 and a half. And oh, I need to change my project page. I'm on my third ball and it does not say that here. I need to do that. So I can keep track. Um, this pattern came out in 2013, I think. Yes, October 2013. That's currently on sale for $8.38. It's a little high, but that's none of my business. Um, what else? Size range goes from 32 and a quarter inches to 52.75 inches. 82 centimeters, 134 centimeters. So, um, if you wanted to make that bigger, my suggestion would be because on the sides, it's just straight up rib. Uh, this is where you could do your modification. So, if you need it bigger than 52 and three quarter inches because this is a fitted garment, just add stitches in the ribbing part on the sides. So, just keep doing what you're doing for the front and the back, make it a little bit longer right before you start shaping the armhole and then when you get there add more stitches so like whatever stitches it says for the armhole do your math right so that I think that'd be a multiple of, not a multiple of you probably have to add like four more stitches to keep the pattern whatever you're doing so by fours just add your ribbing on the side because you're not shaping on the side you're shaping here, right? So if you need to decrease or increase, you're doing it here and not down here. So you can add all and take away all the stitches you want over here, and that's the perfect way to modify it in this garment. So I'm telling you, I have to modify every single garment, usually in the back, right? So I actually have more decreases in the back than I do in the front uh, because I end up getting bunching right in my in between my shoulder blades. So this is the perfect garment to do that. So if you're worried about like it's not going to fit you, just out of here, it's fine. It'll, it'll, and you're not going to mess up the pattern, and it's perfect, and it should be fine. Now, boobages, I don't know. I'm part of the itty bitty titty committee. I'm just going to say, so I don't have that problem. But I would I would assume that if you're in big girl club, you probably already know how to modify. If you're if you're knitting sweaters all the time for that type of thing, I don't know. Is I I don't sit at that table, unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately. So that being said. That's done, but I moved to a 60 inch needle because I needed my 40 inch for 
this project, which is nothing but a few rows. <laughs> Ooh, almost lost stitches. Okay. So I was talking about tank tops last time and um, I was all settled to start. Now I forgot the name of it. Well, it was one of the tank tops that I showed you. Anyway, so I'm looking at it and I'm trying to figure out how to do this. I might have talked about that actually. There's this drop stitch that crosses or whatever and I could not figure it out. And I was just like, let me see if there's something else, right? So I'm looking around on my Ravelry and my favorites and stuff and I came across, oh, and then I did a search because I didn't really have anything that wasn't that I had favorited. I did a search and I came across a pattern that I had actually tried to knit back in 2018 and I gave up on it and I really don't remember why I gave up on it. Maybe it was the yarn that I used at the time because I have a file on my computer for patterns that if I just for whatever reason didn't like it or whatever I put tried and hated and because I was like I know I have this pattern because it's I think it's a free pattern I don't remember actually I should probably look since I'm talking about it <laughs> um did I put it in my queue no yes I did Madeira by Barocco Design um so I don't remember why I gave up on it and hated it, but I did. So now that I'm using a different material, I'm using this cotton silk whatever blend, right? I'm like, okay, so it's going to be more lightweight. It's going to be drapey. The original yarn for the pattern is worsted. This is fingering. So I'm looking at the pattern. I'm going, I th think what I might have done was actually go to size. So I'm going to put a picture up and tell you what I'm talking about. I'm going to keep this picture up for a very long time. So the bottom part of this tank top tunic thing is um, asymmetrical, right? And what I'm, I think what the problem was, was that um, if you're making it fitted, you're not getting that drape. So it looks weird on my body anyway, it looked really weird. And I think that's why I gave up on it because when I was doing the measurements for it, trying to figure out how that would work, I'm like, oh, this is really hugging my hips. I'm like, I think that might have been why I, I gave it up because I was like, why, why would I want that? I want the drape, right? You're not gonna get the drape if it's hugging your hips. So what I decided to do <clears throat> was I cast it on and I did a, a gauge swatch because it's a new yarn. I mean, anytime I, I have a new yarn, I always do a gauge swatch just to make sure my stitch count is the same for that weight of yarn, which it was. So um, I say what I'm gonna do and what I am doing is I'm going two sizes bigger for that drapey part right before you start taking in. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'm doing the short rows right now. So I'm, gonna, I'm doing the big part until you get all the way around, which I have not done yet, right? So I haven't met it on the other side of the, of the needle. Um, and then as you're decreasing, I'm, since I figure out the rate of decrease, I'm going to add more decreases, but I want to keep it a little bit more positive ease up top too, because it looks like it's fitted up top. So I want to keep it just a little bit more loose because my plan is to wear this over leggings, um, in the late spring, if I can get it done by then, uh, summer, early fall because it's still hot down here. So, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm halfway through my short rows right now. Um, let me get the uh, ball band for you for this yarn. The yarn is Noro. And it is Sonata. I used to be able to read that. Believe it or not, I studied Japanese for three years. Can't remember almost anything. But it's Noro Sonata, and it's, it's 360 meters, so that's 386 yards, I think. Somewhere around there, fingering weight. It's single ply, and 
I don't know if you see that. Cotton, viscose, silk, and palmine. And there you go. It's actually kind of nice to work with. Um, <laughs> but when you rip out, that's when it starts messing up the integrity of the yarn. So it gets a little fuzzy. So if you're going to work with this yarn, try not to rip it out too much because it's going to mess with the uh, integrity of the yarn. I don't think I have any spots really where I can show you on it, but yeah, I was making it really fuzzy in some spots, so. But it's nice to work with. Uh, it does twist on itself, which is annoying, but it does feel nice going on your hands. So, there's that. Um, nothing left to say about that. It should go quickly because the whole thing is stuck in it. Like, literally. You're... you're doing the knit pearl thing on the bottom to stabilize the hem and that's it so easy peasy once really I should be done in a month I would hope man this light is like right in the middle of my face there we go <laughs> uh what else I have some I think I told you about the eclipse yeah so I'll put in some footage of that. Um, not much to look at though. <laughs> it was very, very cloudy here. And it definitely rained the whole day the next day. So the, the few pictures and a little bit of video that I got, we had 95% um, coverage. So it kind of looked like a storm was going through. So it was still cool, you know. Um, it would have been nice to have totality, but we had that in 2017, and it was very convenient to just be able to walk outside your house and, and look at the totality. So I consider myself blessed in that aspect. Um, so yeah, 90, 95%. <laughs> and the funny thing was I had to work that day, and then as soon as like that part was over and it was moving on, on, my, on the interstate, on my way into work, the clouds start dissipating, and I'm like, so I'm over here driving, trying to like pay attention to my lane and look out the window and I'm driving and I'm looking out the window and I'm like, ah, ah. <laughs> I'm sure I wasn't the only one doing that, but yeah, I did that totally. Ah. Anything else? I am going to work on socks soon for my son. Um, that is in my bag that I take out all the time. So I'm gonna go get that because I am not coordinated as usual. So I'll be right back. So I got a new project bag. And I've had my eye on this bag for a while. $40, free shipping. Handmade Buyer's Market. The shop is... The shop is called Busy Bumpkins little bit of a tongue twister and it's like this quilted um I know nothing about sewing sorry this is a quilted top tons tons of pockets oh my god it's like pocket heaven pocket 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 wait there's more pocket 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 there's more inside in here pocket 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 on the back pocket 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 in the front so I've got three projects in here right now all socks everything's got yarn in it it's got this little this is from uh, stitches by Laura but it's got this little thing in here so you can clip whatever you want so I've clipped this thing to put my notions in there you can find her on handmade buyers market too and I've got, like I said, I've got one, two, three, four, like eight balls of yarn in here, right? Like, dude, dude, dude. And I love this color, and I love the paisley. Oh my God. $40. You need project bags that are, like, not your typical project bags. Dude, handmade buyer's market. I'm just saying. And not because I have a shop there. But we have some really great makers over there, so you might want to check them out. And the prices are awesome. Just saying. So, 
now that I've sung praises about my bag. I have not started this project yet, but the yarn is in here. So I'm making a DK weight. My son doesn't watch this podcast, so we're safe. He likes green. He loves green. So everything's falling apart. This is Brooklyn Tweed Arbor. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, whatever the heck that brand is, Arbor. And this is my grassy meadow. Um, I think this is Paul Worth. This is Targi. So um, this is going to be the body. This is going to be the heels, toes, and cuffs. So that's going to be his socks that I'll be working on pretty soon. I also have, I almost never show my socks that are in my to-go bags because I just don't. But I got like this really bad pair of scrappy socks. So I'm really hard on my feet, especially at work. So I'm trying to knit socks so that I can wear at work and not care if they get screwed up within like a short period of time. So it's just a scrappy pair of socks. I'm gonna make these shorties. So this is, um, I think I'm only gonna do like two more inches on this and then just do a rolled cuff because I'm, I'm done. I wanna move on to my next pair of fingering weight socks. Those are fingering weight. My next pair of fingering weight socks, it's this color, I don't know what yard this is. A lot of this is scrap. It's this color and this color. Same thing, this is gonna be the body, this is gonna be heel toes and cuffs. So, so this is my next fingering weight sock project after that one pair is done. And then that DK weight project I'm doing for my son. So he can blow through those socks in a month and then cry me a river and he'll get another pair next year because I'm not gonna be a sock making machine for, <laughs> for him. He is knit worthy, but I'm just, I got other things I wanna do, just saying. All right, so I think I'm done. I'm done rambling. Um, I don't have anything else on the horizon right now. Just working through what I got. I think next podcast, I should have a, an updated progress photo of those squares and what the blanket's is going to look like, which also help me out because I don't know what my size range is looking like and how many more squares I actually need to do as opposed to how many I think I need to do. Um, Hell, you know what, why not? Let's have another giveaway. All right, so still testing out that algorithm. See how many people go all the way to the end. I know there's probably more people who go to the end and just don't want to participate, that's okay. You could just, if you want to leave a comment and just say, I don't want to be part of the giveaway, but hey, how you doing? Go for it, it's fine. So this week's question let me think on that one. Okay, I got a question. So this week's question is going to be, what have you made? I don't care if it's knit, sewn, crocheted, woven. What have you made recently that has brought you joy? So you can answer that question down below and like this video and subscribe to my podcast. And then, um, for realsies, two weeks from now, I will do another podcast. That way it gives people time to watch this and hopefully get to the end. And, okay, there's something weird out there. And uh, see if they want to be part of the giveaway. All right, so I hope you're well. And I will see you in two weeks. Go make something. Bye.